evening. And welcome to the Board of Swap meeting of April 17, 2014. The, this is uh, on television, just so news. And we have a, uh, actually a very good uh, agenda this evening with a couple of um, hot topics. But the first one is the Rail, tra uh, Rail Trail Committee and uh, the Recreational Path Feasibility Study. And if you recall, in 2011, the Board of Selectmen created the Rail Trail Committee uh, to do a study on the feasibility, whether to convert the Bay Colony Rail Trail into a, um, a walkable uh, path. And um, they have gone as far as the town has allowed them financially. Now, Carol, if you'd take it from here, because you were inside that circle sure, for a long thanks. time. So uh, the committee, after spending hundreds and hundreds, if not probably close to a thousand hours when we combine everything together, um, has uh, taken all their work and put it into a report which is being submitted to the selectmen tonight. Um, we've had a whole bunch of copies bound. It will also be on the website, on the Rail Trail Committee page. Um, there will be some copies in the selectmen's office, some copies in the clerk's office, at the town library as well. And um, it represents um, all the information that the committee members were able to uh, gather uh, during the two years where they reviewed this. Um, appendix, appendix X is the appendix that lists the items that the committee has determined are still open. Those are the items that we had requested $50,000 for at the May 2013 town meeting that was rejected. So uh, should, should in the future uh, $50,000 be found to uh, finish the study, um, the report does list specifically the, the areas that need to be finished by professionals that we could not um, um, find within our own uh, town employers. So employees. So um, before I introduce Kay Caney, who is chairing the committee, I would just like to say that it's a tremendous amount of work and having watched the committee members work on this, um, a committee that was made up of folks that were neutral, against, and for it, that I was incredibly impressed with the, uh, the quality of the thinking and the ability of every single member to look at things objectively and to share information that they gathered. And I would like to specifically thank Kate for taking that last 5% of everybody's work and putting into a beautifully looking study. So Kate. Um, pursuant to uh, the request from the Board of Selectmen of last fall in October, we uh, finished the feasibility study to the best of the committee's ability. We as a group, um, as a whole, felt that there were five critical path areas that we could not address. We met with uh, town departments over the summer and they concurred that the resources didn't exist in this town. Um, currently, they included site planning, engineering, conservation, legal. Um, so the, this report has taken it as far as we can. We gathered information from about the towns of Needham and the city of Newton who are going forward with their uh, paths. And uh, we're submitting this report as a complete report from the committee. Well, thank you very, very much. Um, I would like to recommend uh, that uh, Given the fact that this is the, uh, all, the uh, sum of all the knowledge that has been gathered by the committee, and that there's, um, uh, we're not going to town meeting this May um, for additional funds, that it would be appropriate at this point to disband the committee, uh, would be my recommendation. And if, if sometime in the future um, this gets activated again, then we can recreate a committee. We probably need different skill sets at that point anyway. Okay, thank you. Um, Kate, I uh, concur with Carol's uh, comments. She did a tremendous job. The whole committee did a tremendous job. I happened to uh, read the uh, study over the past uh, few days. Thank you. And uh, it's one of the most complete studies I've seen in, uh, that members and committees in this town have done. So thank you very, very much. Robin, would you like to say anything? I, I concur. I was really impressed. When I started printing it out, I was expecting 30 pages, and it just kept going and going, and I did it both sides. And I did have a chance to read it, and I was also very impressed with all the information that is in there. You really researched and covered on every aspect that I could think of. So thank you very much to you and your committee. 
Mm -hmm. I actually just like to thank um, all the members of the committee who put in a lot of time and a lot of hours and did a lot of research. So I'm very grateful to have worked with each one of them. I, I see Matt here tonight, so we can personally thank Matt yes. as well. Well, with that in mind, then I will entertain a motion uh, on your uh, dismissal suggestion, Carol. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Tonight's agenda obviously has a couple of uh, large to topics, but. Um, <clears throat> You'll bear with us while we go through the normal course of town business. And the next agenda item is a poll petition. And this is a utility poll petition. Uh, Mr. Ramsey, can you speak to that? Is somebody here from Verizon? Yes. Betsy yes. Kelly? Yes. Betsy's here from Verizon who can um, talk about this, please. Mr. Chairman? Can you introduce yourself, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Of the board. My name is Elizabeth Kelly, also known as Betsy, um, representing for Verizon tonight. Requested by the highway department to place a stump pole so that a guy that was in a tree could be removed. Um, this is where Mr. Frank, uh, Frank Hughes. Okay. And um, aside from Mr. Hughes's uh, suggestion, do you then talk to the homeowner directly in front or the side, the abutters, or how does this process work? The process is that the, uh, the town notifies the that the hearing is taking place and they have the seven day written notice and to call me and my name is provided so that if they have any questions, I receive no call. Okay. And this petition, will this start the seven day process or is the seven day process ended? Or, or the where seven day process has ended. Okay. And have we heard anything? We have not. Okay. So a stub pole is just a um, support pole. It doesn't have any of the utility wires on it. Hey, Mr. Chairman, currently Please. this guy wire is connected guy to, wire. To, a, to a stump, a tree that was cut off a long time ago and is rotting. Uh -huh. And our concern is that it's going to fall down and then possibly create a public safety hazard by falling down and then affect the delivery of electricity and telephone service. So this is a preemptive strike, so we can move that guy wire and then remove the tree stump. Okay, who removes? Who bears this cost to remove the tree? We will do that. Okay, and the utility company doesn't. Huh? But it's our tree. Okay. So Betsy, do you have anything to do with double poles? Do you have anything to do with double poles at Verizon? You know all the poles that have been. I don't personally. Yeah. I can carry back any message to you. Well, I'm sure most towns have conveyed as well that we would love to see all the double poles made into single poles. So, thank you. Okay, and the action uh, necessary, Dave, is? Vote to approve the location and execute, I believe, the document. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, you just do that execute the order, and then it will be paid to the town clerk's office. That's right here. Okay, so um, I move we approve the installation of one jointly owned stub pole number 120-16A on the westerly side of Church Street. Okay, do I hear a second? second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. That's me, right? That's all that's required, Grant? Thank you. Okay, on to our next agenda item. We're a few minutes early, but I believe all the parties are here. Um, and this is to discuss the Mass General Law Chapter 61A, right of first refusal option to purchase real property. And I'll briefly describe what we know at this point. 
On April 4th of this year, the Board of Selectmen received the notice pursuant to the Mass General Laws, uh, Chapter 61A, that uh, Jim Snyder, trustee, had entered into a purchase and sale agreement to sell a 27.2 acre parcel located at 46 Springdale Avenue to Northland Residential Corporation. The contemplated use of the property is development of a Chapter 40B uh, project consisting of 40 plus townhouse units. 24 acres of this parcel are classified as Chapter 61A agricultural land. Under the statute, the Town of Dover has the right of first refusal to purchase this parcel. The Board must notify the seller within 120 days whether or not it intends to exercise this option. Now, this, tonight, I have introduced what, is ha what the Town has uh, uh, gotten, and we would, this evening, like to um, gather all the comments and questions from the Town's people and the pertinent Town committees and departments. Um, so that we may, uh, um, number one, gather all the questions, number two, try to create something on our website that will be a Q&A to answer everything prior to a, an open hearing, which is mandatory by law, prior to us making the decision, yes. Okay. Here they come. Um, if you bear with me while people take seats, thank you. Yes. This ongoing meeting, so if everyone can sit down, please. Thank you. Uh, I do ask that uh, anyone attending this evening's meeting sign in. There is a sign-in sheet uh, that is in the first row to my left. Thank you. There's some more chairs up front if anybody needs them. Uh, for those who just walked in, I was describing the right of first refusal that the Board of Selectmen received on April 4th from uh, Jim Snyder at 46 Springdale Ave. And I was about to introduce the developer who I have met with, um, with Mr. Snyder and Mr. Ramsey over a cup of coffee and we said hello uh, recently. But before I introduce him, I want to make it very clear that we are not related in any way. Mr. Uh, Jack Dolly from Northland, thank you, sir. We have the same exact spelling, everything, but we are not related. <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Dolly, Mr. Snyder, um, I know you're representing this evening. We will afford you a few minutes if you'd like to uh, um, show everyone what the proposed development is. I would like uh, to be quick, just so you know. Uh, there will be no questions and answer to Mr. Dolly. We, this is a, a, not a fact-finding mission this evening. Um, I'll open the floor to questions that we will take and answer at, at a number of, I imagine, meetings going forward. Mr. Dolly, you'll have the floor whenever you want it. Mr. Snyder, would you like to say anything in the interim? While we're waiting, I might mention that um, what we will probably do uh, is put together a uh, web page on the DoverMA.org website to um, start the process of keeping citizens of Dover informed about various documents and answers to questions and issues that arise, probably in an FAQ type format. So um, over the next week or so, we'll probably get that on onto the website and you can just check that out um, um, at, your, at your will. And as we have answers, we'll just add them to the uh, information on the website. Good. Absolutely. and have been in business since the early 70s. I'm the third generation owner, and as uh, Mr. Dolly on the board said, we are of no relation here to um, North Bend Residential is a 40-plus year old company uh, that works throughout New England, uh, anywhere from Camden, Maine, to probably Hanover, New Hampshire, to Newport. Uh, we have a long track record of developing what we would like to think as extraordinary properties. Um, and we do anything from single-family subdivisions to multifamily for sale 
condominiums. We are not a for rent developer, we are a for sale or a home ownership developer. Uh, and as I said, we tend to work in uh, the upper end of the market. Several more recent projects that I have done at Northland, or we have done at Northland that are presently ongoing. Uh, we developed the side of a portion of the side of the McLean Hospital campus in Belmont into 121 townhouses. The model, uh, the plan that I have prepared for tonight, or not for tonight, for the property, is modeled off of that. We're proposing the same floor plans. Um, we're also presently developing the Dutchbury, uh, Ingham, Cape, uh, uh, Marshfield, Hanover, uh, the project in, uh, in Milton is underway, and another one in less than permanent. Uh, I, have, I know this property. Uh, I actually looked at it in the early 90s when it came on the market before the Snyder's bought it, uh, and didn't have the opportunity to buy it at that point in time. I was reintroduced to the other property last summer, uh, and from late summer through just beyond Christmas, um, the Snyder family and I have discussed a range of development opportunities for the property. I am well aware that the property is subject to the Chapter 61A provision, uh, and the town therefore has the right to buy it um, at fair market value uh, uh, in advance of my development. Um, so, what have we envisioned for the property? Uh, the conversation that we started with looked at the town's multifamily zoning bylaw. Multifamily zoning bylaw is a bylaw that was created by the town several years ago, or 10 years ago, I said that exactly when I don't know, uh, that attempts to do a number of things. Um, attempts to provide a diversity of housing type uh, for a range of residents, uh, young and old. It attempts to preserve special pieces of land. Uh, it attempts to uh, utilize creative land use planning uh, for the development of property. It also aims to develop um, housing for affordable folks and housing for eligible folks. Um, it requires a number of hurdles that one has to go through, namely a rezoning of the property to qualify for use of the multifamily district bylaw um, and a few other special permits substitutes for that. It is essentially tantamount to a 40B process. Um, it, it, uh, at least the result is supposed to be look like a 40B process in that there's a 25% affordable requirement, uh, there's open space, and the like. Um, however, there are a number of hurdles that unfortunately make it untenable for me uh, as a developer to consider using it. So we are looking to permit uh, a project through the use of the chapter Comprehensive Permit Act, otherwise known as 40 bit. Um, Jim's asked me to be quick. Um, I have elevations and pictures of what we've developed in Belmont. These are the unit styles and floor plans that I'm proposing here. It is what we call age targeted by design housing. We're looking to develop two to three bedroom uh, condominium residences that range in size from 2,000 to 2,500 square feet on two floors, um, two to three bedrooms, a first floor master bedroom, and a two-car garage. They are named for an active adult, empty master, retired. Uh, we have a lot of experience uh, developing this kind of product. I've probably done a thousand of them this size throughout New England. Um, and I would say, by and large, my residents see this uh, on our website or they can go up to Belmont and tour it together. So to the plan. Uh, the plan was included in my in the notice that the town received from the Snyders such as, uh, subject you know in conformance with the chapter 61 provisions. This is the property, an aerial view of the property. We have Springdale Ave on the bottom of the map. Uh, Property essentially in this direction runs due north south. So on the west side, this would be the east side. We have a railroad, <coughs> railroad easement bed to the rear in the MBTA Franklin or Pawtucket or something like that line. Uh, it is predominantly an open field. There is Spring Brook that runs down like this. 
Uh, the main farmhouse is right here. There is an array of trees that, uh, that frame the driveway going into the main house, pool and some accessory buildings, a couple of riding rings, and then a large open field in the center of the property, uh, wooded up in this corner. And like I said, uh, Springdale uh, Brook or, or Stream to the east. Uh, there are obviously wetlands in this corner, there's some wetlands in this area, uh, and there's a little bit of wetland right along Springdale Ave that needs to be respected in any development. The plan that we come up with will be a little hard to see from the back, um, but I guess if it's the town's going to put it on the website eventually to see it. Jim, I have a great job for you. <laughs> all right, about all that? Three boards is too much. Let's see if one board works better. Again, Springdale Ave to the base of the map, the railroad bed to the top of the plan. The plan that we have, the development that we propose, is a total of 40 units, including the existing residents that the Snyders live in here. We propose to bring in a roadway following or on top of the existing driveway. That roadway would be 22 feet in one in width, which is in conformance with the subdivision regulations that the town has. It would come in, do a loop around the center of the field, um, and we would place homes in that would be constructed, condominium residents would be constructed in groups of two units per building or three units per building around the perimeter of the circle, orienting out to the east and west, east this way, and then there would be a cul-de-sac at the top of the map that would, uh, if you will, hockey stick into the woody triangular piece of land to the south. Um, each of these homes would essentially be, a, when they're finished, be about the same scale as a conventional, newly built, single family home that, we, that might be built on a lot here in um, Dover. Uh, they're essentially a single floor with a roof and a second bedroom loft, or a third bedroom, second or third bedroom in the loft area in the, in the, second, in the roof structure. They're relatively low profile in size, um, 30, about 32 to 35 feet in, in height total, um, with appropriate dormers and the like to give them some architectural detail as as the uh, pictures that I had before. Um, the plan does a couple of things. The plan, first and foremost, stays out of all wetland resource areas, riverfront or otherwise. So as best I know it right now, we have not flagged the wetlands at this juncture. We have used what GIS information is available to us, or to anyone, plotted on a plan and plan to it. So the attempt on this conceptual plan is to stay out of not only the 100-foot buffer off of the screen, but the second 100-foot buffer, which is, does allow some use, some activity within it. So you, if you look closely, you see that the second 100 feet off the screen, if our information that we, that we have presently is accurate, is approximately where my finger is, goes in and it comes out like that. Uh, there's also a wetland in this back corner and we have a 100 foot buffer around it. Um, there is also some wetland in this corner and we try to stay off uh, out of that. It does not uh, ruin the existing house. The attempt, what we were trying to do, is that the experience one had in traveling down Springbrook Ave presently would be the same close construction. Unless, of course, you stopped, stood there, and stared in. But traveling that road at a normal rate of speed, by and large, you would have the same view in by maintaining the allay of trees on one side or both. To a new road, this, the uh, first structure would be, this, this is one inch equals 60 feet, so I'm going to guess that's six feet 
that's six inches, six, seven inches in times six, so that's over 300 feet in. We've maintained a 50-foot buffer around the perimeter, which is one of the multifamily zoning criteria. Existing zoning, I think it's 15 or maybe 20. Uh, 40B lets you go to something less than that. Um, the attempt is to try to preserve a meadow-like feel here, um, uh, minimize the impact around the perimeter to the existing butters, which namely would be uh, to the west, uh, by maintaining a 50-foot buffer of existing vegetation or augmented, existing and augmented vegetation. Um, wastewater. Uh, we are proposing that wastewater be dealt with with a, what is called a Title V system. A Title V system would be located if soils support it, and we, and we, we like to think they do, in the middle of the property, um, in the open field. Title V would allow us to build a septic system up to 10,000 gallons or 90 bedrooms um, without having to go to, through a whole treatment process and so on and so forth. So the notion is that you can put a rectangular leach field in the high point of the land. The high point of the land is the center of the field, um, creating a green area uh, that frames the approach in here, uh, that, that has a subsurface wastewater disposal or septic leach, field, leach fields, um, and that it is away from the riverbed, river, the perennial stream to the east, and any wetlands are that might exist to the west, obviously down over here. We're proposing a service to the development of municipal water, it's spoken with colonial water, uh, to ascertain availability, capacity, and pressure related uh, concerns over water. Uh, and, and at this early junction, we believe that um, such exists. Um, so the, the plan, uh, you know, is, uh, but I can say this, We're, I'm doing a 40B project in the West. We're doing it in a collaborative way through a LIP program, um, working with the, the municipality, the planning board, the affordable housing trust, the conservation commission, and the light boards, um, so that we can go through a planning exercise with the town as opposed to independently. Uh, I'm doing a similar project in Milton, um, where we're attempting to uh, go through a multifamily permitting of a site for a similar use. Um, but do it in a collaborative and respectful way. Uh, and it is our hope that we will have the opportunity to have this property in this town in the, in the, in the month to come. Thank you, Mr. Dolly. Now, again, this is not open hearing. This is not fair. We will not debate it. But if we will entertain questions. We don't know them. And uh, we'll get back to a post that Ms. Carroll said to create a with uh, page up on our existing traditional page on our website. Um, we will entertain questions right now. Please. Can you identify yourself, sir, please? Sir. Um, Howard Fisher, I live at uh, Six Clover Circle. Um, I'm looking at this plan, uh, Mr. Dolly, and I don't see a uh, second roadway, emergency roadway. It's a narrow opening with the uh, entry of that property. Uh, are you planning to put a second roadway, second at, means of egress? At present, we are not. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. I'm Jane Remsen, 85 Strawberry Hill Street. Um, I'm also on the planning board. I just wanted to correct um, one fact, I hope, that um, Mr. Dolly had said that because the property is 27 acres and it's in our R1 zone, which means it's one acre zoning, that the density, the possible density for this lot could be something like 20 units. Is that what Mr. Dully said? 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. Yeah. No, I mean under current zoning. I don't think he represented a number. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make a statement that um, under current zoning, if we didn't go the 40 B route, the frontage on um, Springdale is about 350 feet. <coughs> And currently, we don't allow dead-end roads. So the only way, under normal subdivision regulations, a road could be put in there is if it was in like an oxbow type of situation. It could go in and then come out. And I don't believe there's enough room there for that kind of thing to happen. So frontage, if you didn't go the 40B route, frontage could not be created. 
Um, that being said, you could create three lots under normal zoning because in this area of town, you have to have at least one acre plus 100 feet of frontage per lot. So I just want to be clear on what <coughs> current zoning would allow you to have versus, I'm not even making an opinion on which is better. I just want everybody to understand that. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Please. What is the process for the town? Can you also, identify yourself, please? Uh, Betsy Alden, I'm also in a butter. What is the process for the town to acquire the land? Well, as I uh, started this agenda item, that uh, on April 4th, we were notified that this particular, uh, a part of the uh, whole parcel, and uh, in particular, it's a 27.2 acre parcel, of which 24 is uh, 61A agricultural, and the remaining uh, is Mr. Snyder's uh, primary residence and barn and so forth. Now, that being said, the town has the first right of refusal because of the 61A designation on that particular part of the uh, parcel in which we have 120 days um, after April 4th to indicate our desire or exercise our right to either buy it or tell Mr. Snyder and Mr. Dolly that we are not going to buy it. So we're in that, we started that process this evening. This is an introductory meeting to, to tell the whole town what's going on. We will have a series of meetings and one open hearing pursuant to uh, uh, Massachusetts General Law, excuse me, on this matter before we decide. But right now it's a fact gathering um, um, mission. Uh, after I hear all the questions and get all the answers, I'd probably be able to answer that your question. Right now, uh, there are so many variables out there. Uh, yeah, I'd be, uh, yes, please, Carol. Uh, let, let, let's see if we could just talk about some general categories, because we're, okay. we're all the very big products. So, obviously, there's um, the, the, t the town council review of the current purchase and sale agreement that exists between Northland and, and Mr. <coughs> Snyder uh, to, uh, to make sure from our perspective that um, it meets legal requirements of uh, 40B uh, purchase and sale um, as well as the, the other mass general law issues relative to acquiring 61A property. So we have to go through that kind of legal review first. The Open Space Committee um, We'll probably get to this a bit later, but the Open Space Committee will have a role to play to assess the value of the property to Dover as far as uh, for open space and, and trail development and so forth. Um, the Conservation Commission uh, will be looking at the wetland issues um, and other issues associated with the property relative to wildlife and, and so forth, things that are under their jurisdiction. The Planning Board, um, as Jane Remsen said, um, will be uh, looking at aspects of the development relative to the planning board and all that kind of information will have to come together for us to assess. Now assuming that we don't raise the money privately, we would then have to go to a special town meeting in order to get uh, the citizens of Dover to um, pick up some amount of the uh, cost to acquire the property. Uh, we would hope that there would be some uh, private philanthropy involved. The Dover Land Conservation Trust will be looking at this not only because of their mission for open space, but they are also on a butter to Mr. Snyder's property. Um, and at some point, or within 120 days, we will have a sense of how much, um, if it looks like it's something that we want to do and makes sense, we would call a special town meeting and there are various notification requirements for that, you know, 30 days and so forth. We would be coming up with what the uh, bonding cost would be for the town and the impact on your median uh, priced house of, of Dover for increased taxes. And once we gather all this information, <coughs> we would um, hold a special town meeting, all of which needs to be done within 120 days, including, and that takes you into the summertime. Thank you, Carol. So does that help a bit? One follow-up question. How is the fair market value of that property determined? Uh, it's an excellent question. And um, that's one that, uh, we have tried to look into and since there is an offer a purchase and sale on the uh, the property 
that would indicate that that's the current fair market value. Uh, much like if you're buying or selling a home, the value is in what the uh, buyer and seller agree to. Um, that's a pretty generic explanation, but uh, we want some legal definition to that also. So that would be in addition to what Carol just explained. Please. Uh, ladies before gentlemen, Mr. Norris. Thank you. Please, Mary. Uh, Mary Payne Larry, Whiting Trustee. Are we privy to know what the current uh, purchase and sale number is? Absolutely. It's public knowledge $5.55 million. Am I correct? Thought so. Thank you. Doug Novich from Public House Springdale. I'm curious on this valuation issue. Um, unlike a single family home offer, home offer, uh, this offer is going to be subject to the ability to permit and bill the product that's being proposed. Um, if down the road, um, more of them was unable to build the 40 plus units that they originally uh, intended to build, the value of that purchase price would be significantly lower. So I'm just trying to understand the valuation process beyond just the purchase and sale price because that's conditional. There's going to be, I'm sure, conditions that um, would make it profitable for Northland to build based on a certain number of units. So I would think, in fairness to the town, that we would want to make sure that we're purchasing something that doesn't have contingencies and it will be subject to variation, um, ultimately based on what could be built um, through the permit process. That's an excellent point. And um, to that, um, if Northland didn't uh, transact this, you know, I don't know what the number would be. Um, and to that point, if you look on the developer's side of that, and there's an economic standard that a developer has to reach um, as, uh, in, and approve, in the value, uh, the basis, I should say, value that Northland would have in this property is a, an appraised value uh, without the added benefit of the con contingencies of the, the new uh, development. Now, to add to Carol's list of what we want to do is a full appraisal also. But it's an excellent point and one that we're well aware of is, uh, um, is a disconnect between what it's worth as a single family home, and it's a beautiful property, and I, I mean nothing against it, and when it's finished with 40 units on it. So, excellent point. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Jay Morton, uh, to answer your question, if, if you go to the, and then I have a question, no, section 61A, section 14, they'll give you the rules. They have rules as to how the town will do it, fair market value, how it's determined. Smart guys like the guy in my right road. But I have a question, where are you served um, at, at a retail level when you're, you're non-affordable units, what's your price point? <coughs> What would I propose to sell to non-affordable units? Yes, sir. Um, oh, uh, we believe that the market would bear million dollars up for those units. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Comments? Please, again, sir. Just one more. How Fisher. I, if the purchase price is 5.5, and only a portion of the property is the pot that the town would be buying mm -hmm. uh, because only a portion of it is the under 61A. Mm -hmm. uh, in the purchase and sale agreement, is the price allocated between the two, between the There is understanding. Portion? Yes, there is understanding in the purchase and sale. There is an allocation of $1.5 million for the primary residence and $4 million plus or minus for the back. So we're talking, we're talking about the town's acquisition of the property for $4 million. That is something legal counsel is going to have to tell us on, on, on whether we have to exercise our right. Now, it's one parcel. It's not two. Um, so um, I'm not a lawyer. So I'd have to have someone who's a lot smarter than me tell me that the town can buy all 27.2 acres or 24 acres. But it's a great question. Another question that we'll add to ask town council to answer for us. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Nova. One more follow-up question. Um, the, uh, if the town was to agree on price, is that price then adjusted for rollback taxes associated with 61A? Excellent question. That would be part of the negotiations with Mr. Snyder if, in fact, we exercise our right. 
Yes, sir. Leo uh, Dodd, President of Meadows. Uh, is there concern in Town's part that the Meadows, which I believe is the same type of development, went through at least a couple of bankruptcies and it's taken three or four years for those things to get sold? And the other property near the cemetery, I think, has also gone through a couple of bankruptcies and those properties still haven't been completed? I, I did not hear all that question. I don't know if anybody did. I think the question had to do with the fact that if you look at the last seven or eight years of history of 40B developments in Dover between the Meadows and Dover Farms, one could question the validity of the business model. Is that correct? Right. All those projects have apparently gone through bankruptcies. It's taken years to build houses, and one of the developments still isn't completed yet. Thank you. Are there any other questions, comments? Please. That's an excellent question. Would a traffic study be part of your due diligence, Mr. Dolly? It typically is, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, anyone else? Lodge, it's only a few questions for a lot of people. You have an opportunity to ask. Oh, Justine, Justine is here. Okay. Um, Justine, can you hear it? Um, again, all, a lot of my questions have already been raised, so let me ask a new one. If the town were to be able to acquire <coughs> simply the 24 acres, how would one get to it, assuming that because of wetlands issues, there's a perennial stream, et cetera, it would seem to me, although, again, your attorneys no doubt will have to advise you on that, uh, you'd have to probably put in another road since the driveway to Mr. Snyder's house would be presumably one road and then presumably you'd have to have another road. Uh, so that's a question. I don't have an answer. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I do think if the town were to try to buy this, one would want to know what the use of the property would be for. Absolutely. And that should be like a town meeting vote <coughs> and also at elections. I think there should be two phases. Thank, so you you for, thank you for your comments. Yes. I have one more question. Yes, Mary, please. So the primary residence, if the town were to buy the property, the primary residence would somehow be carved out of that because what's the whole yeah. acreage is 27. 27.2. 27, but the, the um, part that's in 61 is how many acres? Approximately 24. 24. So where are those 24 acres on that map? Please. Um, I don't know. Mr. Dolly, please. Crack at it. So if the town were to pursue that to Justine's point, how would you get there? It looks like it's landlocked. Excellent question. Uh, I, I, we cannot answer that tonight. On the list. On the list, on thank the you. List. Yes. Thank you. I, I would mention as we're talking about maps that um, in, the, in the package that we received, um, there are some black lines that to me don't reflect the, the I guess it's the east property line, but actually reflect the Powisset stream or whatever it's called, the stream there. So um, I just want to make sure that um, if, if you go through and I don't know who did the bolding of the lines, but that, that the stream is not used as a property line. So is, is that from your pres your package? Uh, it's so the either either I did it or um, this is Mr. Snyder's uh, attorney's okay. package. Is it, okay. Your point is so. Let's make sure that we. Thank you. Okay. Good. <coughs> yes, I see two questions. Hands up, please. Uh, John Cook, I'm on the butter as well. Uh, 120 days seems like an awful short time for small municipal community to get all the work done. Mm -hmm. Do you think it can be done in 120 days? And if it can't be, can we get a postponement beyond 120 days? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I will 
um, have you know that we went through the purchase of another 61A uh, property on Dedham Street last summer. And the time frame was adequate. It's not a property as big as this, obviously, but there were the same concerns, concom, uh, traffic, uh, open space, and we got it done. Uh, so it's our intention to get it, uh, the, uh, to exercise the right within 120 days. There was another hand up. Mary Powers, I was just wondering, as to Mary Crane's point, when she's, there's no access to the back of the field, and in the evaluation, that would certainly affect the assessment of that field. Uh, say that again, I didn't hear if that. there's no access to that field, uh -huh. the back field, then that affects the fair market value of that field. Um, I, I imagine, but yeah, I, I don't which, know. Why. Which is why there are all kinds of issues like that. The wetlands also has an impact, which is why we really need to get a professional evaluation accomplished hmm. that would take into account all these issues with the property. Yes. Mr. Dollar, can you answer? I, I, I'm sure this is a, a very. I'm not sure I understand the question. <laughs> there's, there's forest that surround the existing property, and those need to be maintained, or they need to be taken down within your construction? Um, for, the, for the most part, the only wooded area is up in here. Um, there's, there's, there is some trees on the perimeter here, and obviously down in there is the wetland. Um, so the trees that would be taken down by this proposed plan are predominantly up in this corner. Um, Does that answer your question? Abutting the, the property that I'm on, is there, there's a lot of, there's a small forest. Okay, I'm not sure where you are, man. It's, it's on the, uh, it's on the, it's on the uh, Springdale side. As you're facing this property to the left or to the right? It's on the meadows, facing the property, it's on the right. On the left, facing, on the left, on that okay, no, There are no proposed trees to be removed in that, in that direction. Say that again? There are no trees that would be removed in that location. Yes. Question. Uh, first and foremost, the 120 days is by state statute, number one. Um, and I don't know whether the developer, um, who's quite anxious, quite honestly, to find out whether we want to buy it or not. He doesn't want to spend a penny down there if he doesn't want, you know, can't buy it. So that's an excellent question for our attorney, whether we could even engage in that question to him and whether um, he can answer it or someone else has to answer it. I don't know the answer to that. Well, that's true. It's a, it all <coughs> boils down to finances in the end. Yes. But this is a pretty fast flow. Uh, our pretty fast notice. There's a lot of wildlife. It's a big. This is a big area, mm -hmm. and suddenly drop the town when our special town meeting be called in the middle of the summer. There's a lot of work on the town's point of view that, but I think maybe the information. Wait, and that's why we get paid the big dollars, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jimmy, as a clarification, just in, in fairness of the process, there's still, just to be clear, there's questions as to, is this even modified? Has the clock been done? That's number one. Number two, to your point, in 119 days and 23 hours, you may get a letter, which begins an entirely new process, because to get three fair market values, because He's going to come back at $2, they're going to come back at a dollar. Anybody who's trying to get an appraisal, they, 
you know, it takes 30 to 35 days just to do that. That could be another 120 days. So believing that our town is um, educated to the extent that they are they and will be, I think we'll find that the process plays itself out significantly longer. And our town fathers, our town fathers and mothers are certainly knowledgeable to get us there. So make no mistake about it. The question is a simple one. Does the town even want to engage? The whole aspect of price is an entirely different time horizon. So um, the Red Sox season will be significantly over. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Morton. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll ask Ann if there's any more questions or comments. If not, I'll thank everyone. And Mr. Dollar, thank you very much for coming in this evening. Mr. Steiner, thank you. Gentlemen, representatives. Can I just say something? Yes, please. Carol would like to say something. So, we all know that 120 days, whether it's 120 days for the whole process or 120 days for part of the process, a little bit after, whatever it is, for a small town like Dover, this is a tremendous amount of work that's going to require um, some very concerted uh, team approach between the various planning boards, uh, Conservation Commission, Open Space, the selectmen, and the citizens. And it's wonderful to see so many folks here tonight. Um, it's amazing what it takes to get folks out, but I'm really glad you're here tonight. <laughs> and I, I well, in just a minute, Justine. I urge you to please stay informed. You know, we know that there are all kinds of issues in our everyday life about communicating, and everybody's busy, and we don't have a really great way to communicate with folks um, in Dover. Uh, we're going to try to use the website as best as we can, and we urge you to take a look at that, you know, when you have a moment just to see if there's anything new on it. If you have additional thoughts, additional questions, additional issues you want to raise, please um, Robin and Jim and I all have email addresses. They're on our the Dover MA website on the Board of Selectmen. Keep us informed of your thoughts, and we will be having more meetings, and please attend. Justine. Just, just a, a suggestion. Uh, the purchase and sale agreement has been made available uh, to us on the Open Space Committee, and I assume others. Maybe you could have that put on the website so people can look at it. And secondly, I think the Rail Trail people have done a very good job of keeping people apprised of what's going on in their committee. Maybe we could all, who are interested in this, send to the uh, uh, town administrator our email addresses so that a similar email list of residents could be uh, put up. Sure. So what we did with the Rail Trail Committee was we, we um, had folks that were interested in um, keeping informed of meetings and other information that we were posting on the, on the website. Uh, give our, our um, IT coordinator their email address. So anytime that there was a change to the web page dealing with the Rail Trail Committee, there was just a notice that came out onto your email. So it sort of notified you to look or it notified you of a meeting. So that's a great idea, Justine, and we can set that up. So stay tuned on the Dover homepage on how to do that. Good. Thank you very much. Now, we do have other business to attend to, and I don't know if all of you want to stay for that normal town <laughs> business, so I'll give you the opportunity. Thank you very much for attending this evening. Well, wait, stay and see. She's still alive. Oh, great, thank you. Before everybody leaves, if you haven't signed in, we would appreciate your signing. The, the uh, list is going around up here.
Jim, every time I see you, there's controversy. Oh, no, I, I, I did that to you before. I did that uh, oh, before to you at the uh, transfer station. Yes. I, <laughs> I thought I knew who you were. <laughs> This is a this is an ongoing meeting. I thought Dave went out there to uh, calm it down. Thank you, Jane. Okay, I believe we have enough uh, silence to continue. Good. It's Mr. Ramsey's uh, gatekeeper, so to speak. Oh. <laughs> David, thank you for doing that. Were you a bouncer in your younger days? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me uh, go on to the next agenda item, which on the agenda we were going to finalize the article motions, but we're not going to do that this evening. I'll pass over that and we'll take that under uh, advisement at the next Board of Select meeting. My next agenda item is to discuss the status of the proposed amendment to the Miniman Regional School Agreement. Robin, is this uh, your particular item? It is, and Carol can fill in where oh, okay. I don't provide accurate information. So on Monday, um, it was Monday, right? Yes. Was it Monday? Yeah. <laughs> on, on Monday, Carol, um, Dave, and I went to a meeting in West End of members of the Minuteman Regional School to discuss the status of the amended regional agreement and for each of the towns to present their issues. Uh, approximately half of the town members were represented at the meeting. It was very interesting for us, the town of Dover, to hear some of the concerns of the larger towns that are part of the regional agreement. In, in the end, what we learned was that Lexington has voted yes, Lincoln voted to pass over, and Wayland voted no. So, um, again, it was emphasized that Wayland's no vote does not mean that the amended regional agreement is dead. The members, the towns, were going to work with all the towns to try and get a yes vote. Um, we in Dover expressed some of our concerns with the new agreement. The, the fact that it penalizes small towns, other towns with few students have the same kind of concerns as we do. Also what was discussed was the fact that the building project as presented is building for, for towns, for students outside of the region and that was not something that the member towns really were in favor of. So they set a timeline for, for the school committee to, um, to right size the school um, and they need a final decision with plans by October 2014. So again, we got some of our questions answered. We are going to, our town council is looking at the regional agreement. The town of Weston has an article that they're going to present at that, their town meeting, which basically is a conditional yes to the regional agreement. Um, Weston will accept the amended agreement on the condition that they can leave or exit the region. Um, we are looking at what our options might be and hope in the next two or three weeks to get a clearer picture of what our options are for the town. 
one of the other uh, uh, items that was discussed um, along the lines of the chicken and the egg to make sure that if we approved the new agreement with the understanding that we were going to get out, that we could actually get out. Right. Now, to do that requires um, the approval of DESE, the Department of Education and Special Education. I'm not even sure what DESE stands Secondary for. Secondary education. Secondary education. Um, an individual um, at DESE has um, assured the, region, the Minuteman school system that they will allow towns to leave. Um, at this point, we don't feel that that's sufficient. It's one individual. Um, we have an election coming up, so um, that has to be explored in more detail to give us any confidence that it's a meaningful decision by the state, by DESE. Um, in addition, the new agreement um, requires that the majority of the towns proactively vote no to let a town leave. Uh, the Needham Board of Selectmen uh, developed, with their legal counsel, um, a motion which they have approved and which, uh, is it Boxborough? Voted it just on. voted on um, after our meeting on Monday. Right. Um, that basically says that the Board of Selectmen will uh, promises not to put a warrant article on a town meeting uh, vote uh, to not let a town out, and that if a and then and if a citizen chose to put an article on, which would be the only alternative, that they would actively work to uh, to get a no vote on that article. So that's one of those things that's sort of necessary but not sufficient. But um, we are working the Minuteman school committee is working on getting a majority of, of boards of selectmen to approve that kind of motion. We will probably be taking it up as well um, for other towns that, that want to leave. So we did go through that process on Monday as well. So it was a very informative meeting. There's still a lot of balls in the air and it's just not an easy issue to try and simply explain what's at stake. So we're trying to get all, of, all the facts together. We have sent over a package to our town council to look at whether or not it would be feasible for Dover to have a conditional um, vote on accepting, accepting the regional school agreement, looking at what, what's now become known as the Needham wording. And, and then again also, um, drafting a potential intergovernmental agreement for Dover with the DESC. You know, what I'm concerned about is obviously the issues you have raised this evening. But on a bigger picture, the administration in, in, of this whole process, now they're changing yet another very important aspect of, of the decision. So you had an 800 uh, uh, student campus uh, exists today. No. Yeah, 800, right? Uh, high that, that's right. what they want to. Right. That's no, right now plan. they have around eight, uh, maybe high sevens. High, high, yeah, they have but the capacity. The capacity, capacity right, there's yeah. approximately, in a right. rough number, 400 in district, um, uh, 350 out of district, and you have a night school. So now, at the very last minute, roughly two weeks before we're supposed to go to town meeting, they're talking about downsizing the building, that plans are gonna be done by October. Uh, it just adds to my confusion. And recently, the Warren Committee and I were discussing this and they were looking uh, for some insight and I couldn't give them any, quite honestly, because I'm, I'm confused about the matter. And this just adds to my confusion. Well, ha having been on four different um, building committees for various nonprofits, um, it's amazing to me that they they had development of plans first without deciding on strategically what their regional school system is supposed to be like. I mean, the first thing you need to do is decide programmatically what kind of programs you want to give, what do we expect our student enrollment to be, what do we want our student enrollment to be, and then with the enrollment numbers and the programmatic needs, you then go out and talk about what kind of facility you want. So I'm absolutely, it's incredibly frustrating. Yeah. The impact on the dollars are amazing. And it just adds to the questions about what else do we not even know that we don't know. Yeah. And then we haven't asked about, you know, also there was um, conversation about 
what it would cost to bring the school up to code and the number that was presented at the meeting we attended was somewhere around $35 million. Oh, see, I've heard anywhere from three to 50. And, and they basically also, spread. they also told us that that number had been updated recently. So there are, you know, unfortunately, I think what happened was the school committee focused so much on just trying to get an amended regional agreement that they believed they could pass, that they forgot about all the other issues that had to happen simultaneously. And, and that's where we are now, trying to push this through town meeting. Um, you know, the, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has said to Minuteman, all other schools that came into our process, when you came in, those schools have been built. You don't even have a final plan. So there's a lot of pressure on Minuteman from the state that if they want to stay in the MSBA program, they need to get a realistic plan in place. And I'm sure those schools didn't have 16 members of a region, right. each, each with veto power. Right. And the state has not provided any leadership into how to work through that system. They're just leaving it to, to, the, to the region's own devices to figure out how to get out of this mess. Um, when in fact, this kind of education is the way of the future. So exactly. and, it's, and it's discouraging to see that there's no leadership from the, from, um, the, Commonwealth. From the Commonwealth. To, to use this as an example of how to move forward educationally within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, because it's an incredible opportunity. Yeah. And, and you know, again, that was the comment that was made constantly, that this is not a no vote on the education mm -hmm. that Minuteman provides. Mm -hmm. You know, it is an excellent facility, and it's just unfortunate that where we are right now. Yeah. So clearly we're not in any position to opine to uh, this particular amendment. Yeah. Um, there was an article in the Globe, uh, Boston Globe West section today, and I believe on May 5th there's a handful, maybe six or seven towns right. who are having an annual meeting that evening. So that's approximately two and a half weeks, so uh, the story might change three or four times from now till then. <laughs> so, well, you know, from a Dover perspective, we have a path that we're going down. Well, Carol and I spent time after the meeting, but we have we have asked our town council to look at certain items and so that we can figure out what to present at town meeting. Okay, I'm getting frustrated by this. I'll be honest with you, a lot of sweat equity involved and that's my favorite expression as David knows. Uh, the, the sweat equity with no end result here. It's very frustrating, but thank you for the update. And um, there'll be more to talk about as we get closer to town meeting. Mr. Cohen's here, obviously, and I know you guys are frustrated as well, John. Uh, yes, I mean, I don't want to repeat yeah, everything you said, I agree with. Uh, just one question. Um, was there any discussion at your meeting uh, with respect to how to deal with Wayland's no vote? Um, because, as I understand it, and I, I'm getting a new way, everything's changed constantly, even though I think I've got a definitive story. But that no vote, uh, either for it to make sense for any of us to proceed with even voting on this, is it because the Minuteman that the region anticipates going back to Wayland with the exact same agreement and saying, would you reconsider this? Because if there's any changes, then we're back to square one. All right, now, all of our votes are irrelevant if there's any changes to the current I mean, we were, there's there's a lot of undercurrents to why there was a no vote. So, you know, it wasn't clear that the no vote was... Well, I, I understand so, that, and so, I actually so I know idea, some of the principles involved so the there. the idea was to go back with the same, you know, there, the, the game plan, so to speak, is for the regional school committee to get as many votes as they can for this regional school agreement, um, and then determine what they need to do to get all the votes so that they can pass it. They felt that, that, that if they were able to get um, 15 or even a majority of the towns voting yes, that they could go to Wayland and work the issues, which to Robin's point are many, some of which have no relationship to other towns. I mean, it's years and years and decades of 
stuff. No, so so the exact same, they could go back and do that again. Exact same agreement right. because I have the, right. the sweat equity involved, and right. and and then decided, well, we have to start from scratch because if one word has changed in the existing proposal, we're all back to square one. And exactly. Okay. And they've 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 spoken about doing side agreements with each town. That's very unpalatable. We've got towns negotiating differently and, and so forth. It's not the right way to do it. So, um, to, to quote something half hour ago, those issues are on the list. <laughs> right. Yeah. There are a lot of issues on the list. Yeah. Okay. I hate to say it, but I've heard enough about Minuteman this evening. Oh, well, we could. <laughs> I, go I, on I, for I, hours. I know. I know. I'm being facetious. That's a but. summary. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, let me go on to our next agenda item, which is to execute the 2014 town election warrant. Okay. Um, does anyone want to speak to this? Or is this? It's very similar to prior years. Yeah, so no, no, no special yeah. questions or warrant articles, right. no Nothing. debt, no uh, non-binding or binding questions. No. It's just the election. Yeah, there's only one change, well, yep. one change that I see, and that's the date. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But, uh, so, and we'll, the year. Uh, so we'll execute that this evening. Mm -hmm. Okay, when does that get sent to the town's people? A week from tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Do we have to make a motion to accept it before we execute? Vote to execute. Okay, then I'll make the motion to execute the annual town election warrant, uh, the election being on May 19, 2014, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Dover Townhouse, which is Precinct 1, I believe. <laughs> okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. How many are we executing? Two. Thanks. Oh. I've been checking my emails during the meeting because I was I was just certain that you would ask me. Well, of course, <laughs> I got an update on it. Um, I don't know. I, I was anticipating that tomorrow um, we were getting them back from the printer, but I, I, wanted, I don't have that kind of the, the proof or the getting the proof or the books? The books. Oh, the books. Oh, okay, yeah. great. Well, it's nice this year. John is personally delivering to every single household, so that's really nice. Appreciate that, John. Well, looking for volunteers. Above and beyond. Above and beyond. Door John, if we can't have fun, then it's not worth it. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you, Greer, for the uh, town election warrant. Let's go on to the next agenda item, which is a, uh, a very positive news for the town. And we will. Um, Vote to execute the MWRTA van lease contract documents and appoint the Dover representative to the MWRTA. Um, and uh, briefly, um, the town, with the help of the COA and Maureen Dilge, who's in, in the audience this evening, has worked diligently over the last year, I think maybe a little more, in obtaining a, a van that COA could utilize in the town of Dover. Um, the cost of that van um, would be reimbursed by the MWRTA or another agency of the Commonwealth. The cost of the operations. Yeah, sure. thank you. Uh, and um, after uh, much sweat equity, uh, it's come to conclusion. And so the town will receive an eight-person van with one or two handicap accessible spots. Two wheelchair spots, yes. And um, as we all know, uh, the cost which would be reimbursed to the town per an agreement um, w are borne through the highway department uh, for town meeting. And second of that, then uh, once we um, execute this, you will then post a job for the van driver or drivers. Mm -hmm. I know the COA, who I had a, a wonderful uh, coffee with this morning, are looking forward to that. So, that so being... When do we get? Um, Mr. Ramsey, please. When do once, we once the board executes these documents and gets them back to the MWRTA and they execute, we're ready to go get a driver. We can pick up the van. Good. come with a red bow? A red bow. A red bow. We, we are hoping to have, have a logo. Have you ever seen the Mini Cooper ready commercial? For a oh, it's a red bow. <laughs> Probably not red, though. I think the colors are different. Now. Blues. So, Dave, yeah, so on page five, there's a question about um, 
and we needed to insert a name to who who is going to have the full power and authority to uh, act, on this. act on this. And who is that going to be? I would suggest if the board is going to appoint Craig Hughes as the appointee to the board, that he be the same person named the, the lease document. Okay. okay, thank you. And I noticed that one of the town responsibilities, in addition to a lot, a lot of reporting, yes. um, is to provide insurance. And how much is that going to cost? $523 annually. Thank you. I did, one of the things that jumped out at me and we hadn't discussed, and I made very clear to the COA this morning, that it's a Monday through Friday operating uh, vehicle. Mm -hmm. And I know we hadn't discussed it, but we may as well put it out there as we're discussing it this evening. But we had spoken with um, Janet Claypool about these. She had looked at both documents, and I believe originally, curiously, the, the document from the RTA was Tuesday to Friday. Mm -hmm. So Janet made the suggestion, why, don't, why not Monday through Friday, which one on Monday? So they were amenable. And either one of these documents can be amended if operationally we need to do so going forward. Okay. And this lease has a term of? The lease is seven years. Seven years, right. But again, it can be terminated by either party, I think, in 90 days notice. And then the operating agreement runs on a fiscal basis, so that'll terminate June 30th, and we'll have another one. We wanted to keep them uh, clean for operating budget purposes. Okay. It's seven years or 150,000 miles, miles, whichever comes first. What's ah. your bet? Which is going to come first? <laughs> well, I've won one bet this evening. I don't know. If <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you this one, too. <laughs> Okay, now uh, the succession of executing our voting to execute, um, do we put Craig in place first before we do this, or how would you suggest we do this? Uh, either way, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, do I have both agreements here, or just one? You should have both. Separate, good. Yep. Okay, good. Well, let us first um, vote to execute the agreement between the town of Dover and the Metro West. Regional Transit Authority. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Just Dave? Yes. Uh, both documents square? Well, so this can be signed by somebody different than the person with full authority on page five? Yes. Okay. Yep. I, I, that's a good point because I was thinking that as you were speaking. Yeah. Okay. And let's uh, vote to execute the um, Metro West Regional Transit Authority and the Town of Dover in the Intergovernmental Agreement in Mobility Assistance Program Vehicle Lease. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And this is David signs this David also. Well. How many copies are there? Three. Thank you. Thank you. Maureen, I want to thank you for all your uh, hard work over the last year or so on this. And you've really done a great job in making sure this happens, along with Greer and David, obviously. Thank you. I, uh, I also want to thank both Greer and David. Took a lot of patience, didn't it? Oh, um, <laughs> I've learned a lot. Do you want to take care of the Minuteman I was going to ask. <laughs> 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 As a citizen, I'm totally confused. I don't know what to do with town meeting. <laughs> Join the club. Yeah. Okay. Where'd my agenda go? Thank you. Well, the crowd has dispersed someone outside the uh, doors. And I can hear myself think now. You know, if we, if we had a local tavern in town, you'd know where they'd be. Well, at least there may be maybe in that region. Ready, yeah. Okay. Let me move forward. And the next agenda items um, um, approve the no parking sign placement at the uh, no, my, I have a tongue twisting problem right now. No, it's not public, is it? No, 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 Excuse no, me, no, Mr. No. Chairman, did the yes. board vote to appoint Craig as the. No, no thank you. Oh. Thank you. I knew. Uh, I move we appoint Craig Hughes on page five. <laughs> Which agreement? Which would be our representative of the MWR. The only one page yes. five. Right. <laughs> Um, Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hughes, on behalf of the uh, board.
thought that made a lot of sense since he would be responsible in his office, he would be responsible for scheduling, maintenance, so forth and so on. Good, thank you. Now let's go back to my no parking sign. Okay, is that the new parking lot that they just put on Poets? Poet. So Maureen's already left, but we have two instances tonight of good things come to those who wait. Yes. So we finally have a, a new parking lot for Noah and at Woodlands. That is yeah. going to make the traffic on the weekends on that road so much better. Because mm -hmm. cars park. Yeah. Oh, it's such a dangerous. Right. Yeah. This has been an issue since I came to Dover yeah. 15 years ago. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Took them that long to complete the parking lot. Yeah. To get permission. So I have a question about the boulders being placed five feet off the road. So five feet off the road, does it not still allow room for a car to mosey up to a boulder and still be off the road? Hmm. I don't think it does. I don't think it's off the pavement at five feet. Can we just make sure that whatever this is, that, that it's do. because people will do it, and even if they're a foot on the pavement, hmm. which they are now easily, they still do that. So they need to be close enough where it's really obvious that they can't squeeze in. Mm -hmm. It's an excellent point, Carol. Just because going there every you know, week to the transfer station, there are cars that are on the road. Yeah. Car yeah. Right on the road. And you recall from the 15 years of discussion about this, one reason the police have been uh, less aggressive in enforcing the no parking up there on, where they're on their roadways, there's no place else to go. Right. I believe now that there's going to be a parking lot to be very aggressive about making sure nobody's on the pavement. Okay. But I will double check. Now, do signs need to specifically say, the signs need to say that fines will be levied, or is that not necessary from a legal standpoint? It's not necessary from a legal standpoint. Now, when you say that, that means that they're already spelled out in the bylaws of the town? Yes. Okay. Good. Well, I'll vote to approve the no parking sign placement at the new parking lot. That's plural, yes? Parking signs? It should uh -huh. be signs because Ms. Chief oh, McGowan's... Um, because it's quite a long stretch. Yes. Right, it says, and it there are multiple no spots signs. where cars have yeah. been able to squeeze in. This thing says no right. Okay. So how many signs are there going to be, I guess, is a good question. I don't know the number. More than one. More than one. Who will... Um, you know, before I, I should have asked this question, who, who determines uh, wh where they go? The chief and Craig. Okay. Yeah, they've collaborated on this whole process. In keeping with the rural idea of the town of not too much signage. Yes. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Or? So is that parking lot operational now? A I don't believe it's it. open yet. I don't yet. think so either. Okay. So when it does become operational, will there be uh, increased um, patrols by our police force? I presume as necessary. Okay. Yes. John Cohn has actually volunteered to, to do that. <laughs> as well, some of us are going to have to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> He's busy. <laughs> okay. Now let's move on to approve the no parking sign. Yep. Signs. Signs. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good, thank you. Our next agenda item as we move uh, more quickly through these items, to we'll appoint the heavy equipment operator slash groundskeeper. Uh, Greer or Dave? Uh, Mr. Jolly, uh, Ron Briggs, who was the heavy equipment operator and groundskeeper for the highway department for the last 10 years, and also the union steward for the last several years has retired. Uh, so we posted his position internally. There was some um, internal expression of interest for the personnel roles for five days. We interviewed the uh, two applicants on Tuesday, and um, they're both excellent employees. We decided um, to recommend to the board to appoint James Gorman. He's currently a heavy equipment operator groundskeeper over at the Park and Rec Department. And he also was the Park and Rock employee who was lent to the highway department for the six months this past winter. So they had a good feel for his ability to work with the rest of the guys over there. They all work together regularly anyway, and um, it worked out very well. So we uh, would be anxious to appoint him. 
Now, does that mean uh, Park and Rec are going to replace him? Uh, unfortunately, yes, it would. Yeah. You know, have they started that process, or are they waiting for us to uh, uh, they're appoint? Waiting for the board to appoint. Okay. And this uh, this pay rate falls within our budgeting yes. parameters for fiscal year 15. Yes. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lateral. Move. Okay. Yeah. Well, before we go forward, I, I would like to thank uh, Ronnie Briggs for. Yes. Um, Doing a great job with the town. I, I, you know, the times I've met with him uh, on t our town business is the union negotiations. He's always been a gentleman, mm -hmm. and a uh, pleasure to work with to come to a conclusion on these union contracts. So thank you, Ronnie, uh, for your uh, service to the town. We will miss him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, then uh, I'll make the motion to appoint James Gorman for the. Uh, heavy equipment operator slash groundskeeper. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next agenda item, the Boston, Pone, uh, Boston Post Kane presentation. It's been a longer evening than I anticipated. Okay. Uh, this is a great tradition that um, a few years ago at the request of the Dover Historical uh, Committee asked us to uh, go about it, and it's when Mr. Melikin actually was a selectman, and he really took it under his wings to really get this going again. But uh, briefly, I'll give you a, a quick, a quick um, summary. In August of 1909, Edwin, Edwin A. Grosier, publisher of the Boston Post newspaper, had canes made for the presentation to the selectmen in 700 towns throughout Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, and Rhode Island. The canes were to be awarded by the selectmen to the oldest male registered voter in each community, to be used by him as long as he resided in the town. Upon that citizen's death or moving out of the community, the cane was to be passed to the successor. In 1930, the, the tradition was amended to make a woman eligible as well. The Board of Selectmen and the Dover Historical Society are the trustees of the cane and the uh, um, Caretakers of the cane of the, is the Dover Historical Society, which is mounted in, mounted in a display case at the Dover Town Library. And, and um, I welcome everyone, I invite everyone to go look at that. Uh, okay, now that's the background. And it's uh, both good and bad that we have to appoint uh, a person to this particular role as the, the next old, oldest person in the town. And it is Barbara Larkin, who I will be a gentleman and not mention her age come <laughs> July 12th, but she was born in 1914, <laughs> <laughs> which is quite, quite the benchmark. Um, so the resolution uh, to, to be proclaimed by the uh, selectmen this evening and the Dover Historical Society is that uh, Barbara Larkin is hereby declared the oldest applicant for the citizen of Dover and is hereby presented with the Boston Post Cane, which will be displayed prominently for viewing by the citizens of Dover. Signed this 17th of April, 2014. Um, thank you and uh, congratulations, Barbara Larkin. Now I know we have, um, we have a nice resolution that we've signed and you'll forward that to her. Thank you and we'll continue that. Uh, through the clerk's office that we get the updates on different people moving out of the town or as the case may be. Oh, Bunny, if you're listening tonight, we're going to be, have you on that board for quite some time to come. Okay, thank you very much for that. It's the interesting thing about that cane is that it has been lost. And it was found by a citizen of Dover, if I remember correctly, at an antique store up in Maine. Who bought it and brought it back to Dover, you know, sometime when we first started this seven or eight years ago, right? Mm. Yeah. It's a great story. Yeah. And I'm glad the tradition is continuing. Of course, in 1930, I don't know if they made the right decision, but, you know, these yeah. things happen. Too bad we don't have the cane with us this evening. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have made the comment if we had the cane in the end. Okay, other business. Uh, we're going to award the highway bids for the Type 1 in place, bituminous, you say that, I'm having trouble. Bituminous concrete. Thank you, well, it's concrete. Pavement markings and catch basin cleanings. 
Okay, is, Greer, do you speak to these? Yes. Please. Yes. No. Um, the bid opening for the annual spring highway work was done last Thursday, April 10th. Um, for the bituminous concrete, we had a total of four bidders, and um, the uh, low bidder for that was T.L. Edwards at $73.68 per ton, which was actually just above what it was last year, uh, well, the current fiscal year, which is $73.45 per ton. Uh, the town has used TL Edwards before, and they have done a very satisfactory job. Um, second bid was for the um, pavement markings, and we received two bids for that. One was Highway Safety Systems and the other was Markings, Inc. However, there was an error in the calculations um, in the bid submitted by Markings, Inc. They calculated for single line, not double line, despite having been advised to um, calculate for double line. So um, they withdrew their bid. Um, therefore, the bid um, we would like to be awarded to Highway Safety Systems Items one through five painted uh, $17,203 total. Last year it was $17,188. So again, very close to uh, last year's cost. And items six through 10 thermoplastics, $16,446. Last year was $16,180. And finally, Catch basin cleaning, we've now, um, we're now doing that twice a year instead of once a year. The sole bidder for that project was RJ Gabriel Construction. Uh, they uh, were the um, company to which that bid was awarded last year. This year, they, uh, their bid was uh, submitted at $21.75 per catch basin for materials removed from town. Last year it was $22 even, so actually there was a slight decrease in that. So the uh, total bid for um, all catch basins two times this year was $46,632. I'm amazed, and it's wonderful that the pricing went up so little. Mm -hmm. I mean, almost the same for all of them. Yes, yes. Given the economy's improved, that's, that's great. Uh, the fiscal 15 budgets, I'm sure these are accounted for in the highway department. They are. To what extent are they over? I'm sure they're not under. Uh, is they conservatively budgeted or aggressively? Conservative. We always do everything conservatively, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. And why are we doing them twice a year now? We had this discussion two or three years ago. I remember and Craig came in and discussed it, and I can look at my notes, but it made a lot of sense at that time. Okay. Yes. Okay. Probably made a lot of sense back then, too. I think <laughs> the new stormwater regulations were the precipitating yeah, factor. Yes, that's, that's what are they, right. The Ponset, uh, this, it, it, what do they call it? The Ponset, um, there's a name for it. I don't, I don't want to get Yeah, the Watershed the Act. Watersh yeah. yeah. Which is basically right. making its way toward Dover at some point in life. It's out a little west now, whether it's Southboro or whatever the case may be. Um, so Craig, I think, is being proactive in, in cleaning up things prior to yep. the town of Dover being affected. So I applaud him okay. for that. Yep. Okay, I'll entertain motions for these three contracts. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 All for you. Aye. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Greer. Um, special licenses. Okay, I know we have one. I know, are these all retroactive? No, there's the last one. So what do we have, six retro? Thank you. Okay. I will read them, then we'll vote as one after I read them. Um, the first five, as just uh, said, are retroactive. And I know I asked this question, but it was a timing of just uh, the office just... Um, they got caught. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. First one uh, was at Boston College Connor Center on April 3rd, and they, the Chief uh, has signed off on all of these. The second was at Boston College Connor Center on April 8th. The third uh, was, again, at Connor Center on April 10th. And the fourth at the Connor Center again on April 11th. Um, and the fifth retroactive was also at the Connor Center on April 12th. And the one that hasn't happened yet, which will happen on May 24th, at Elm Bank. And again, the chief is uh, has, uh, authorized all six of these. Do I hear a motion to approve these six special licenses? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. As we finish up on special licenses, our next agenda item is the Chapter 90 request. And who can speak to this? I can, Mr. Please, Chair. Dave, you've been very quiet down there. Please. Uh, this is uh, the routine Chapter 90 request. The project specifically is for the repavement of Center Street from Medfield to Needham. It'll take place this summer. It's part of our paving plan. Here goes the traffic. There goes the track. When is the projected, uh, when is this work supposed to be done? Sometime Let's over see. the summer. We don't have a specific I date. I want to know when I should go on vacation. We'll certainly let, let the board know as soon as we have a time. Typically it's late July or August. Okay. Can we request a date? <laughs> you certainly may, absolutely. Um, so this, uh, now Center Street from uh, okay yeah the whole thing the whole huh? thing it's gonna be a lot of fun. yeah so I see we're receiving some extra funds this year that is a separate item yes I was just going to talk about that because I saw I, I thought we received some two hundred and ninety thousand chapter 90 funds on an annual basis yes okay so you accumulate those funds and you don't have to turn them back to the Commonwealth that is correct. So the accumulated number will cover this 481,000 yes we have some six hundred and fifty thousand dollars okay thank you chapter nine. not counting the 42,000 on the separate right the person. additional number Carol just spoke of that's the advantage of Craig really having that that the five-year plan so he knows when he's got a huge project coming up to banks save his funds and accumulate. Yep. Good. Okay. Now, specifically, David, we just um, approve this. Vote yes. to approve it. Vote to approve the Chapter 90 request. Okay. And that covers both of them. Just the first one. Okay. Oh, the two separate things. Oh, separate sorry, ones. I jumped the gun. I didn't realize that. I move we approve the um, using Chapter 90 funds for the resurfacing of Center Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. Did I hear a request to date for construction there? Yes, it's contingent upon me being when on you're vacation. On vacation. <laughs> okay. Greg, can you say that again? Okay. Oh, two pages in. Oh, the kinds of a different order. <laughs> we 
where the green thingy is. <laughs> okay. Now you can sign that. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I see. You think? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I, I signed it over I think here. I signed in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah, we signed in the wrong place over here. Did you? Yeah. yeah. It said duly authorized municipal and officials. And the little tag was there. Yeah. I think Carol might have signed Did in I say I signed in the wrong place? Can you see? A bad form. Absolutely, Carol signed in the wrong place. I signed in the wrong place. Did I sign in the wrong place? Definitely not us. I'll sign anywhere. <laughs> but what, That's okay. Guys... I'll, do, I'll, just, I'll just sign over here, too. Yes. Why do you do that? We should sign in both places. <laughs> They'll have six signatures. So Robin didn't sign this one. Right, because we were debating where to sign. So do I sign in both places? That's okay. Okay. What it seems that the government will even look. Oh, right. It's, it's they can't say we didn't execute. Just a form to be filed. <laughs> it's because it's late. We're late. It is. It is yeah. late. Isn't it? Okay. Uh, the next one would be to approve the Chapter 90 Winter Rapid Recovery Road Program Reimbursement. $42,969. Yes, as described by Carol a few minutes ago. So we vote to accept this? Yes. Okay. I'll make the motion to accept the additional funding of $42,169,000. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have we have we already used this? Just no. Because it has to be used by June 30th, right? Yeah, or obligation of funds. Obligation by June 30th, finish of construction by September 30th. So it'll be done when we're doing Center Street? Mm -hmm. Depending on what no, it is. This, this it's is going to be repaving Hartford Street from the intersection with Walpole to the Medfield line and the white line, fog line painting that we uh -huh. do every year. Okay, thank you, Greg. Keeping that all together for us. Um, our next agenda item in other business is prior notice the water department. David, you want to speak to that? Certainly, Mr. Chairman. We've been looking for a leak in our water system here in the square for several months, and we finally found it. It's out here on. We hope we found it. It's out here on Center Street, on this side, but across from the Charles River School. So we think it's going to cost four to five thousand dollars to fix it. We may have enough money in our budget, but we're going to be really tight. So we wanted to put in this prior notice to give you notice that we may need more. You know, you know what's interesting aspect to this is you're going to tear up the road, fix a pipe, put the road back in place, and then Craig's going to come by in about two months and rip up the road and redo the road again. Well, in 35 years, it's the first time we've doing it in this order. Usually, we do the repaving and then we go yeah, and right, right, the trench. Yeah. So this is good news. They're actually going to call for a flowable fill in the trench to minimize trench settlement, so that when he goes into pave, we won't see a dip in the road. Yeah. Come August. So we've, this is. We've had a lot of water leaks recently. Last couple of years, we had the big one over by the market, right? And we yep. had Charles River School one a while ago. Now we have this one. And we had a couple on Whiting Road. A couple of Whiting The cemetery Road. too, right? Wasn't that? Uh, they have a huge water leak at the summer. We had a water problem up there that was re related to the installation of their system, I believe. Okay. Which was different. But yeah, in the 15 years I've been here, we've had more in the last three than I don't think we had any before the last three. I think it's coincidental. And the pipe system is old. It's aging. Mm -hmm. We might give that Boston Post cane soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just on a roll. I, 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 You're I, on. Forgive me. How early in the evening? I know. <laughs> We understand. <laughs> Do you have really. something to sign? Well past my bedtime. Okay. Go. Good, thank you. Um, okay. I there is that 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 item is late breaking, Mr. Chairman. So it's not on equipment? the agenda. Okay. Yes. Under uh, other business we have a request from Chief McGowan, our police chief. Uh, for the disposing of surplus equipment. 
And those, uh, uh, the equipment that he wants to dispose is seven spare tires for the Ford Crown Victoria, uh, for far Ford Crown Victorias, which he doesn't have any in the fleet. So now I understand why he uh, wants to get rid of those. And some uh, miscellaneous emergency equipment, light bars, mounting brackets, strobes, that were removed or upgraded with recent vehicle purchases. Um, the chief will try to sell or uh, auction the tires um, prior to disposing, I guess. Is that correct? He's going to try to roll this, the sale of this equipment into the current auction for the cruiser that's up for sale. Okay, thank you for that. If he's clarity. unable to do that, then he'll put it on separately. Okay. Thank you, Dave, for that clarity. Then um, I'll uh, make a motion um, to uh, approve the police department's um, disposal of surplus equipment uh, with the notion that he might sell some of the ties. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. When I first read this, I thought he was auctioning off seven graphics for it. It's like, where are they keeping those? <laughs> okay, next agenda item as we move toward closure is to approve the April 2nd, 2014 meeting minutes. In this particular meeting, we appointed the three new special police officers. Uh, Ford Spalding and the superintendent Minuteman came in to give their presentation, among other things. I move we approve the minutes of April 2nd as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank really you. great job on this. I couldn't find anything. <laughs> okay, any citizens' comments? If none, then uh, would Carol or Rob would like to make a comment? No. I, I would like to, before we adjourn, to say that I thought it was um, a very good meeting tonight in the dialogue between Northland, which we know would be a controversial issue. And the townspeople and, and all the questions were very civil this evening, and it's very well, uh, much appreciated and, um, and duly noted. But with that, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, and good night.